Christian. I, I know this is a sad time, and I really appreciate you doing this. How are you feeling this morning? Yeah, I, I you know, I think sadness is one day, way to describe it. I think um, probably the resounding feeling for most of us is just uh, looking back and, and just having such appreciation for who we, who we was, and you touched on it. I mean, I think we, you know, we, we came to Florida State. We walked in the door because of the wins and because of, of the, that program, but we left. Um, with just much more of appreciation of the relationship with, with Coach Bowden. Well, tell us about it, Christian, because, I mean, through the world, we all knew him as, A, this extremely charming, folksy, you know, grandfatherly <laughs> figure towards the end, and, and obviously yeah. the wins speak for themselves. But tell us about getting to know the man and what he meant in your life. <clears throat> yeah, look, he he broke the mold, right, of, of what a traditional head coach of a, of a big-time football program looked like in college football. Um he was so joyful. He was hilarious, right? I mean, everyone brings up the, the jokes about his wife, Anne. Um, but he was authentic, right? I think that, that, that's hard to describe a, a lot of coaches this, these days. I think authentic is the best way to describe him. And he cared deeply, right? Like, I, I think what made him so unique, right, is he had this eternal hope that was rooted in his faith, right? And, and he knew that this life w- was not all that there is. And that freed him up to not find his purpose in the wins and loss columns, right? He got his purpose um not from football but in football and that purpose was to love and serve and care for his people right his coaches his players his family and i think the byproduct of that was people bought in people loved coach bowden and and the byproduct was 377 wins and and that number really pales in comparison to um the number of lives that he impacted i mean full full trajectories of, of people's lives were changed because they came to that program he was a father to so many people and I, I literally, I, I owe my life to him, right? So he gave a scholarship to my dad. My dad grew up in, in rural Georgia, uh, South Georgia. He was the first one to go to college because Coach Bowden gave him a scholarship. He, he met my mom at Florida State. And so I, I literally owe my wife, wife to, to Coach Bowden. Mm-hmm. But um, as you said, I think people care more about their relationship with him than, than what they ever did on the field. Can you give us a story, Christian, that you just remember about about a time when you were playing for him that you realized that for him it was more than that, that he cared about you in a different way than just caring about how well you played quarterback? Yeah, well, I, I think it was, first of all, everyone felt that way. I think everyone, first of all, so right, fr- Friday nights we had our meetings before the games, and he spent much more time talking about faith and talking about off-the-field stuff and, and and what does it look like to become a man than he ever did talk about football right like and, and the night before the biggest games against Miami against Florida that was his priority that was not you know yeah he would talk about okay these are the things we need to do and it's funny like his the, the one thing he always talked about was like to win a football game it's about blocking and tackling right like he made that so simplistic and sound so easy but because his priority was everything off the field and how you become a man and and, and your faith and what your priorities are. And, um, you know, he, he was so funny. Even, like, it was so simplistic when it came to football. He, he was so good about relegating power to the coaches. Like, he didn't want to uh, micromanage everything. But the one time he would ever come into uh, our, our quarterback meetings was it was always about if, if we threw a go ball and we didn't put enough air on it, he would always come in on the dry erase board and he'd draw these stick figures and he'd draw this huge arc of how you're supposed to throw the football. (laughs) And it was always this like little diagram of, and that, and that was his, like, that was his priority in in coming to the quarterback room um, when, when specifically talking about football, but it was never, it was never just about football. It was about so much more. You know, it's remarkable because there are multiple generations of people my age and even a little older who only think of Florida state as always having been good. I mean, they've always been good, yeah. but they don't realize that before he got there, that was not the case. He took a program that had not had a lot of success and made it a perennial winner and brought in great players like this one. Christian, I, I really appreciate the, the recollections here today. My best to the family. Say hello to Sam for us, and we'll see her soon. And uh, thank hello. you for doing this. All right. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. That's Christian Ponder on the Goodyear Hotline, helping you discover the road ahead. Goodyear more driven. He, he was the quarterback on the last great Florida State teams. Um, that Bobby Bowden had their their tenures at the school sort of ended at the same time, and then Coach Bowden went on and and and, and you know continued to make a difference in his life, and and he was uh, only really infirm for the last year or so of his life, so he lived a long, healthy, wonderful life. My personal recollection of him that I'll just share, which really is is it's so it's so much more specific to me than it is to him that I almost 
feel a little uncomfortable because we should be celebrating his life. But what I do remember most vividly, he won the second of his national championships on January 4th, 2000. It was the 99 season, um, but it was January 4th of 2000 when he played in the championship game, beat Michael Vick and Virginia Tech. So that was January 4th of 2000. We started a show called Mike and Mike in the Morning on January 3rd of 2000, literally the day before that. And so on our third day doing that show, Bobby Bowden came on. He had won the championship the night before, and he did our show. And that was the first time I ever thought to myself, we really may have something here. You know, like if if the coach of the national championship winning team is, is going to take our call, you know, whatever it was, seven hours after winning this thing. And so I've always, that's always stuck in my head. Now, again, that, that, that was a great team, and, and it, was, it was obviously much more about him than anything else. But that, there's something about that that has always sort of remained with me. And he was so charming 